Design Daddy on the channels we discuss interior design. Play with the job. Not a doctor. Remulon. Remulon. Not a doctor. The it's the ending credits on nine nine oh five. No, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> <Remulon>. <laughs> I bet you didn't know that there is an order to designing your space and the way to do it correctly will probably surprise you. I'm here to make design accessible for all and we don't gatekeep here. I know it can be tough to really understand where to start when you're designing or decorating a space, but that's why you got me. Welcome back to my channel. If we have not had the pleasure of meeting before, my name is Phoenix Gray, AKA Design Daddy, and we talk about all things interior design on this page. So whether you're renting or own, I'm here to help. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Mr. Phoenix Gray, where you can see all my daily design advice videos. Also, you can join my free design newsletter in the description box below, where I answer all the most commonly asked interior design questions. Oh my God, is that Tylenol? Can I have two of those? What's your favorite color is a question you've been asked countless times, and it's not surprising to whether you've decided to refresh a room that you might start in the paint aisle. I've seen people run to the hardware store and they look at these paint chips like they've never seen this many colors in their life and they end up taking like 30 plus different ones in your home with no idea what to do. Everybody is so used to talking about design from a color standpoint that they want to start with paint, but paint is the easiest thing to decide later. So let's get started with the correct order to actually designing a room around. Every room should start with something you love. This is the first consideration you should take when designing or decorating any space. I told you it wouldn't be something to be expected like this. This item that you've chosen is going to inspire the direction for the rest of the space. You shouldn't feel like you're decorating or designing just any space. You're designing a unique and individual space to represent you that you're going to live and be present in. Just because you like the look of something generally doesn't necessarily mean it's right for you in your own space. Take bits and pieces from things that inspire you to combine them in a way that really makes sense to make it look good. In Inspiration is where it all starts. When we start with something we love in a space, it really initiates an almost dialogue between you and the space itself, transforming it into a canvas that is really your self-expression. This emotional resonance really fosters a sense of comfort and belonging, ensures that your space is not only going to look beautiful, but it feels like an extension of you personally. This is one of the biggest things we've learned in school in the past, and it really isn't represented enough. I get it. We see so many beautiful inspiration images on Pinterest of something that we want to recreate or even mimic in a sense, but it doesn't actually resonate with you personally, just aesthetically. By choosing an item that's close to you, whether it's a cherished piece of artwork, a sentimental heirloom, or even a piece of furniture that resonates with your style, you are in turn intentionally infusing the space with its vibe and the energy. Trust me, I know it sounds corny as hell, but stay with me because this is going to really unfold the rest of the process. In essence, this initial act of embracing of what you love really infuses the purpose to transform the space to be a reflection of your unique story. In any room of your home, it should feel like it's actually connected with you. If you fill it with random decor items that you buy at stores that you really think are like supposed to go in, but they really hold no specific interest or value, it ends up being dull. And that's when you fall into the repetition of these trends of constantly replacing items because you're not happy in them. It's really hard to have that genuine connection in your space, and I get it. More often than not, you get tired of these items that you actually are filling in your space, which is something that we are actually trying to avoid, and as an interior designer, it is our job to make sure that you actually love and cherish your space. The second step is picking out a color. But hear me out, you're not picking out that specific color and you're not making a decisive decision anyways. Although having a general idea of the color is often what you wanna have will give you a better idea rather than not thinking about it at all. You don't need to know the exact shade, the exact hue, or even the tint yet, or even the brand that it's coming from. I want you to have an idea at least of the color family. So when it comes to having the furniture, when it comes to the furniture, when it comes to the furniture selection, 
you know you're golden. Colors should be chosen in alignment of the desired emotion response that you really have when you're narrating a space because I've said it so many times, colors really spark emotion. And by finalizing other design elements first, like your furniture, textures, and patterns, you can really create a harmonious composition where colors naturally emerge as complementary components versus just adding them in. I really like to approach this almost as like a layering effect and it really ensures that your chosen hues resonate with the broader design vision and it doesn't feel disconnected or overwhelming or even overpowering in some cases. I also want you to keep in mind that natural and artificial lighting can really significantly alter to how colors appear in a space. Consider these factors before actually finalizing color choices really prevent potential clashes and really help achieve the desired visual effect. In essence, delaying the color selection process allows for a more almost thoughtful, flexible, and comprehensive design strategy that leads to a well-balanced and even captivating result that you want to actually achieve in your space. I've seen far, far too many people out there that pick out the exact color first and once it's painted in the room, the sun and the light changes it, it ends up not being right for the space when you combine all of the items in. So if you want to use green, for example, and you wanted it to be the star, that's a great start, but you don't have to decide right now on the exact brand and color in terms of the pigment because it's gonna pigeonhole you into making a commitment that may change as we go through the rest of these steps. Third on the docket is creating a space plan. Think about how the room is laid out and it's giving more insight into the next steps for creating the room that's just for you. Without a well thought layout, the space plan is honestly going to fail and it's going to have a lack of flow and really not serve the intended purpose of what you need. Starting with spatial planning really ensures that the design revolves around the needs and the activities of the occupants really optimizing the usability. I know that sounds super technical but stay with me. A strategic layout also really accounts for practical considerations like traffic flow, ergonomic arrangements, which are often overlooked if the color and decor choices are made prematurely. Spatial planning really guides the decision on furniture placement and the overall proportion. It really ensures that the room dimensions are utilized effectively or really preventing overcrowding or empty looking spaces. This approach honestly is my favorite as the spatial structure encourages really innovative ways to optimize the style and space and it feels more like I'm playing a game of Sims almost, like you're reconfiguring and reconstructing and even rearranging a room, multiple different layouts to actually find the best solution that utilizes all of the space. I get it, we're not all pros of this. So if you want, there are so many apps you can get out there where you can visually measure the layout of your room or even virtually put furniture blocks in to see how it's scaled in the space using your phone's LiDAR system. If you're not tech savvy, cause I get it, not everyone knows how to work a phone properly, painter's tape on the ground is a really great start to understanding the volume of items in a space and how much room they actually take up. Step four is getting the bigger items as early on as possible. These substantial elements serve as anchor points around of which the rest of the design can really be developed. By securing key furniture items early, you can begin to establish the spatial layouts and proportions, really enabling a more cohesive and actually harmonious engagement in the space. And this step goes hand in hand with the spatial planning. So step three and four are pretty much both together. Large furniture pieces like sofas, dining tables, beds usually have a pretty significant lead time when it comes to actually getting them ordered. They also play a really important and pivotal aesthetic in the function of your room. They often dictate the focal points and contribute to the room's ambience. And with the lead times on these larger items being longer, I mean, it's your special ordering, you can get like 10 to 12 weeks, which is a little bit excessive. But starting on this really prevents early delays in the overall project timeline, allowing for a much smoother execution. So order these sooner more than later. If you end up waiting and pick these items later on, you're going to be disappointed trying to actually fit them into the room and realizing they don't fit, which brings me to another point. In step three, as your spatial plan, make sure you take measurements of absolutely everything going in the room. I cannot count the amount of times I've seen clients order something and it doesn't actually fit. And another 
tip coming from me personally and professionally is measure out the door width and the height of even your elevators if you live in a condo. The last thing you want is to order these items and they don't even fit through the doorway. I don't even want to imagine the heartbreak and rage that will come from buying a cute chair or something and is not even able to fit through the door itself. Hugh Ross yelling pivot in Friends when he bought a sofa. I don't watch Friends, but... <laughs> Once you've gotten past the large furniture pieces and selecting those out of the way, selecting a rug is the next. I know some people don't like rugs, but listen to me because it plays a dual role in both aesthetic and function. A well-chosen rug can really define the mood and the theme of space, serving as a focal and anchoring point, setting the tone for the rest of the room. Delinate, delignate, delegate. Delinate, deli delignate, deli designate, de deli 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 deli. Designate, guessing. Delin. What's the sentence? Additionally, rugs del delinate, del delinate areas within an. Oh, designate. designate. Why is it saying delinate? Additionally, rugs designate areas within an open floor plan, aiding in spatial division and actually creating visual interest that complement the larger furniture pieces that you've already selected in our previous step. The process of matching paint to a rug can honestly be a complex endeavor and the amount of people that I've seen do it, it just ends up not working out very well. Choosing the paint colors before the rug can really lead to difficulties finding the right shade to complement the rug's hues because they can really dominate the space. This results in a serious disjointed appearance where the paint and the rug clash rather than complementing each other. And this is why I told you from the very beginning, do not pick out that color yet. I feel like we should have a counter on how many times I've told you not to pick out the color first, but you know, here we are. I'm gonna keep counting it because I've lost count so far. At least it's better than aesthetic. <laughs> said that too many times. The rug really offers almost a ready-made palette that guides paint color choices and makes it a breeze. Listen to me closely. A rug's colors can really inspire a well-coordinated scheme, ensuring that the wall colors enhance a rug's beauty and vice versa. The flooring in a room is the biggest area in terms of square footage and shouldn't be an afterthought. Remember, this is an anchoring piece of furniture that everything is surrounded by. The rug is also an excellent source of acoustic control in any room and why it should always be included. I know you either love rugs or you hate them, but please consider them because they are so important in this sense. Even in smaller rooms, I want you to make sure that the rug is proportioned to the size itself. At least all front legs of the furniture fit on it so it feels scaled properly. I know open concept spaces can benefit from multiple area rugs to define each zone in contrast. They could even be the same rug in certain cases if you really want to define the zones, but you want that cohesive matching repetition throughout the space. Much like the first step we've gone through regarding picking out something that you love to guide your design and the intention for the room, art selection is another really important pillar that shouldn't be an afterthought or thought as an almost finishing touch or a space filler. Much like that first step, art really holds immense significance in shaping the ambience and narrative of the entire space of a room. As an artist myself, I know that art possesses the ability to really evoke emotions, tell stories, and reflect on your unique personality. By selecting art pieces that really resonate with you, you infuse the space with character, depth, and really create a personal atmosphere. Honestly, it gives you something beautiful to look at every time you enter the room, and it needs to be special to you. The other great thing about art is it can also serve as almost a beacon for your design direction. The colors, the textures, and even the themes within these chosen pieces can really inspire design choices, like your furniture, your textiles, accessories, and even decor items. However, integrating art into an existing space can be a challenge if not done thoughtfully. Selecting art after the design has already been established might lead to a lack of cohesion where the art appears almost disjointed from the surroundings and honestly, it feels out of place, which is the last thing you want from any art piece. You want it to really blend in, but also give you that juxtaposition that you can enjoy. By choosing art early, you have the opportunity to really design the space around it, allowing the art to seamlessly blend into the overall aesthetic. The absolute worst way of buying art is when you're at the end of a project, picking out something that coordinates with the color palette afterward just serves as a placeholder and feels so uncoordinated because there is no emotional connection to it. I've said so many times before, one, support a living artist. Two, do not go to Home Goods, Home Lobby, Hobby Lobby, any of those to buy those stock arts because it doesn't do anything for your space and it ends up feeling cheaper than you need it to be. Okay, 
You've been patient enough and I'm going to let you now pick out your paint and I'm going to let you paint your walls in this step. Now that you've required some of the larger pieces of your room, like the dining table, bed, or even your sofa, depending on the space, you're in a much better headspace to now choose the color you want to really define the hue, the shade, and even the brand that you're buying it from. By being patient, you gain a much clearer understanding of the existing palette and the atmosphere that you actually want to design around. This knowledge of why we waited really empowers selecting colors to seamlessly integrate to the established design that we've already gone through, really ensuring a well-balanced and visual appealing outcome instead of revolving this entire design around the color that you're not sure of. When it comes to any project I've ever worked on personally, having the paint selection is always the last part of the project that I do, especially in a renovation project, because you want the renovation or any design to focus around what you're doing. The color is always an afterthought and it should be something that cohesively goes with it after the fact. In doing all of this, I understand that matching paint colors to existing elements can really be a challenge when done prematurely, because paint can really vary in appearance under different lighting conditions and against various color texture combinations. Waiting until the other design elements in place really allow you to consider how the chosen paint shades interact with the surrounding materials, avoiding potential clashing, and really allowing it to feel cohesive to go with the space so it doesn't mismatch. Selecting paint colors as the final touch really enables you to infuse the room with an atmosphere that complements the entire design narrative. And yes, I know as lame as it sounds, I'm calling it a narrative. My God, I feel like I'm turning into one of my corny university press professors, but you know what? We're just gonna scratch that. Whatever colors you actually choose are going to enhance your mood, accentuate key elements, and tie the overall aesthetic together in a way that wouldn't be achievable without actually contextually understanding the preceding design choices. So most people would have just ended there, but the final step is gonna sound really weird, and once again, I want you to stay with me. It's to not finish the project. At least not completely, but listen. By deliberately leaving spaces unfilled, there's a recognition of aesthetic preferences that are bound to evolve as you grow older and your design styles changes. Allowing for this flexibility in design really permits a seamless adaptation to changing preferences, sparing the need for a complete overhaul of the space or feeling like you need to change it up because you're bored of it. This also encourages almost like a continued engagement from you personally and your home, fostering a much deeper connection with the space itself. This enables you to infuse new elements that reflect your personal and your present state of mind while honoring much of the original design foundation concepts that we've already gone through. Feeling like you allow your space to grow alongside you is what is going to continue to allow you to grow and your design path and your design preferences. As absolutely corny as it sounds, an unfilled space really becomes a canvas of ongoing creativity and a testament to your ever-evolving journey of self-expression. I know, I can't believe I said that, but here we are, you can put that on a postcard. Just as life's chapters unfold, you too can have a space that really matures and develops over time with you. I know all of this seems like a lot, but this is honestly a foolproof approach to all my designs that I take personally that keep everything organized, buildable, and it really allows you to process the entire design or decorating process without any hiccups. So next time you're thinking about redoing a room before you do anything to it, find something you love and have that as the overall centerpiece and how you design or even decorate a room around it. Trust me, it is going to be an absolute game changer. I really hope this was helpful. And if you use this method, please let me know what item you start with. I love hearing stories of my clients of what items they choose and the story behind it and how it really reflects and unfolds the design of a space. Be sure to like this video, and if you haven't already, you better be subscribed to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok for all my daily design advice and Mr. Phoenix Gray. And just remember, if you're ever second guessing yourself, just ask, what would Design Daddy do? Boom. Oh. <sighs>